We're back on America Trends. Thanks for joining us. And speaking of joining us, we have a very interesting guest today, Jacqueline Newman, who is a New York-based divorce lawyer and matrimonial law expert. So, Jacqueline, are you here? I am. Hi. Hi. So, um, I know that you have you have a lot of books that you that we'll talk about later that you have written, but let's talk about first what are the three mis common misconceptions that most people have about divorce? Um, well, I'll say the things that people are most surprised about. Yeah. So first of all, the idea that affairs don't matter, and which is a really upsetting thing for people because they think that you know their spouse ultimately slept with their sister or whatever it might be, and therefore they're so upset about it and they think it's going to make such a difference, and courts just don't care. So that's a very upsetting thing for people to hear. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, now, when you say it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter in court, or it doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter to the couple. Now, talk about wh what do you mean by that? Oh, well, it definitely matters to the couple. Okay. Um, I was okay. going to say, really, it's to the judge. I mean, basically, unless you've introduced these people to your children, which you should definitely never, ever do, um, or you've spent a ton of money on that person, other than that, courts really aren't going to get involved in extramarital affairs, and that's upsetting. Yeah, I, yeah, I would say that's upsetting. But what if we what if we lean the other way and talk about how can we make div the divorce process more peaceful? Let's talk about a peaceful divorce. Well, there, you know, one of the things that people don't understand is that, or many people don't understand, is that there are different ways to get divorced. So there's mediation, there's collaborative law, and collaborative law and mediation, those are probably, I would say, the nicer ways to get divorced. In that sort of situation, the goal is not to destroy your spouse. The goal is much more so to figure out a deal that would work for both people and kind of do everything they can to preserve the relationship for the sake of the children. Absolutely, I love, I, I love that angle. And, and so you talked about how you know, it's, it's, it's a more peaceful way to go. Have you ever worked with people who just hire you and don't even have a mediator? They just hire you to, you know, and, and, and three people talk about what, what, how they're going to split things up, kids and, and material goods? Well, in that sort of situation, you can't, one attorney cannot represent two people. Oh, so I see. in a situation like you're describing, that actually would be me acting in the mediator capacity, oh, which I, I see. do. Okay. Um, so I would be that neutral person working with the two people and trying to come up with deals that, you know, work for everyone. Um, great. Um, how about like common mistakes people make during divorce uh, that ultimately leads to unfavorable outcomes? One of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they go on social media during divorce. And I cannot express enough how that is a terrible, terrible idea. I tell people, you know, go buy some gloves and sew the fingers together and stay away from the keyboard. Um, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes because people will feel the need to vent. And whether it's about, you know, one person claiming they can't afford to pay support and then putting on social media the new car they bought or the big deal, you know, bragging about the big deal that they just closed. So you really need to stay off from social media and saying bad things about your spouse on social media. I mean, it's all just, just a terrible, terrible idea when you're going through divorce. Probably a terrible idea at any point, but definitely when you're going through divorce. Wow, yeah, you're right, because you don't really want to spend time looking at what he or she is doing and uh, add to the already uh, upsetting feelings. Um, I have one more question for you. And it's, it's kind of loaded, but what are the five indicators of an impending split? I mean, we're, we're here on Valentine's Day, but how do you know when things maybe aren't working out? Well, I mean, there are a few just general big signs. So one, if your person just breaks down in communication, and while you may think that they're respecting the fact that you know, you're being quiet in the car because they really don't like a lot of talking in the car, you should think about it because if somebody just stops complaining to you or talking to you, they feel like you're not listening anyway and it's just not worth their time. And so that's one of the big indicators. Another big indicator is when somebody all of a sudden takes a major interest in finances. Um, if you have one person that's just been in charge of finances and the other person, you know, really stayed uninvolved and now all of a sudden is involved, you know, there may be a reason that that's happening. You know, they may just be interested, which is great, or it may be other, there may be doing some research for their divorce attorney. Um, the other thing I would also, you know, kind of say that people should be looking out for is if someone all of a sudden obtains all these new hobbies and all these new interests and friends and stuff, and, you know, none of them involve you. So, and if it's really something that you're seeing that they're pushing toward, you know, 
wanting to go out all the time and saying, oh, well, you can't come, you don't know this person, that sort of thing. I mean, once in a while, that's fine, but if that's all that's going on, it's probably something you want to be concerned okay. about. Um, I also tell people to pay attention if people start changing okay. passwords, um, you know, and those sort of things, assuming that you share them to begin with, and now all of a sudden there's a cutoff, that's another thing you want to kind of be on the lookout for. And then finally, if you know, everybody can annoy each other. It's totally natural to fight in a regular relationship. But if you're fighting all the time, and if it's one of those things that you used to be able to kind of hug it out and now you can't anymore, that might be another indicator that this is just not going well. Okay, yeah, um, I, that all makes sense. It, it, if, it's, if it's a little of those things, then it seems like a normal relationship. But if, it, if um, you know, like you talked about, uh, behaviors are changing immensely, those those are, are real triggers. Now I have uh, I'd love to talk about your books. I know you have some great books um, out. Right. So I am actually releasing a series of books right now. They're actually available today on Valentine's Day. I have Soon to Be X, which is a for women, which is a woman's guide to a perfect divorce and relaunch. And then I also have another book for men, which is Soon to Be X for men, and it's about preserving fatherhood, wealth, sanity during divorce. So I figure that the way I look at it is that there's something there for everyone. Yeah. Um, now, getting back to your, your book about soon to be X, what do you talk about? Do you talk about the law process? Do you talk about the emotional process? Walk me through I talk it. About, I talk about both. So the books are really geared toward what I would be telling a client who comes into my office. You know, we do talk about the law and we talk about you know, the structures of it. But we talk a lot about the psychological components of divorce because that really is one of the most important things to consider. I mean, one of the, I think divorce is different probably than a lot of fields in that the psychological components are so important and they play such an enormous role, sometimes even more than the law does. Um, I say it's psychological chess. Like you just need to know your own feelings and how to address them and you need to be respectful of what the other person's going through and figure out how to help you get the best deal that you can given all the circumstances. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, um, we talked about soon to be X. How is it different for your men's book and your men's version? Well, the law is arguably the same. So, you know, while it's not mirror images, they're, you know, they're basically the same law. The law is gender neutral. However, you know, men and women just have different concerns, you know, playing a little bit of the stereotypical card. They have different concerns when going through a divorce. Very often, women are more focused on the children, and that's where their concerns lie, and men are more focused on the finances. Not in any way to say that men don't care about their children or women don't care about the money, but if you talk about what is near and dear to them and when they come in and the things they're most scared about losing, those, I would say, are the two things that, you know, I really gear the woman's book a little bit more to addressing custody issues and the men's book are gearing a little bit more to address some of the financial issues. Great. Well, thank you so much. I know that nothing is black and white, um, but having these two books that are geared towards women and men, I think, makes a mm -hmm. huge difference. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for being a guest here with us. Can you talk about um, do you have plans for Valentine's? Well, tonight I'm spending it with my daughters, but on Saturday night I'm going out with my husband. Oh, that sounds fun. Thank you so much. So um, um, your website, we can find you um, on, it looks like your book is available and online. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for being with us. And we're out. Thank you. Thank you. Ouch. 80% of us.